Uh, I would like to direct a thank to uh, Director Ormos and Fritt Ord. Uh, it is an honor for Skulls at Risk Norway to have been invited to this event and to be part of it. Uh, as you can see on the screen with our logos, the network I represent is a global movement to protect everyone's freedom to think, question and share ideas. This international movement is a network of mainly higher education in institutions, 414 members in 39 countries, dedicated to promoting academic freedom and preventing attacks on higher education institutions, as well as protecting threatened scholars. This network was launched in 2000 and is hosted by New York University. Uh, and it is, to the best of my knowledge, the only network with this wide scope focusing on the higher education community. The Norwegian section, one of seven, soon to be eight, in the global network, was launched in 2011. We are soon to be 18 members, and we aim to be a local extension of Scholars at Risk. As I won't have time to go more into details on Skulls at Risk and Skulls at Risk Norway, uh, I have brought with me some material you are free to take with you. And I'm painfully aware that my brief presentation will only raise some issues and only touch surfaces. Skulls at Risk Norway held a conference in November last year, and uh, by the way, we'd like to thank Fritt Or for the funding. It was called International Partnerships in Academia, an Ethical Challenge. And uh, the questions raised were how can higher education community ensure the respect for academic freedom and other core values in international partnerships? Let me just insert that Scholars at Risk has a working group on promoting values in international partnerships and Scholars at Risk Norway will also arrange follow-up activities on these issues. One of the main speakers at the conference, Dr. Terence Caron at Lincoln University, presented the preliminary results of his research project Measuring Academic Freedom in Europe and Empirical Analysis. I cannot do justice to the project uh, given the time limit, but I can of course provide you with material on the study. What I would like to draw attention to is that the study showed that Norwegian academics found that the protection of academic freedom had deteriorated over the last years. Compared to the European respondents, they had high scores on questions like because of your academic views, have you been subjected to bullying by academic colleagues? And because of your academic views, have you been subjected to or threatened with sexual abuse or assault in your university? And because of your academic views, have you been subjected to threatened with sexual harassment in your university? And let me point out, I'm sorry to say, but Denmark had very li uh, high scores on lack of academic freedom in this study. Self-censorship uh, that has been touched upon in, in, uh, in this event uh, will also be a major concern in Norway, I believe. It is, for instance, not easy to stand out in media or other arenas presenting results that are unpopular or in conflict with the common opinion or other academics' research or opinions. You may have to prepare yourself for a tough ride and not all researchers can endure that. And maybe to a certain extent we can say that conformity is a feature of the Norwegian society. Another issue I would like to touch upon is the fact that in order to obtain funding for research, even in Norway, you need in many cases to enter the world of research programs with more or less defined problems. Does areas that are left out represent a limitation of 
academic freedom, I just raised the question. There has been a spread in Norwegian media recently on statesman, uh, statements from the Minister of Fishing, Per Sandberg. Uh, this was linked to critical research performed by the Institute of Marine Research on the fishing, uh, fish farming industry. And about 50% of the Institute's activities are financed by the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Fisheries. As this research did not entirely comply with aquaculture as a priority area, the minister, according to the newspapers, asked the question to the researchers, where is your loyalty? <laughs> Which brings me to the next question mark. Are there problems we should be aware of in, in the area of commissioned uh, or contract research? I am by no means arguing against contract research, but the awareness of pitfalls should be there. Finally, uh, at the Scholars at Risk Global Congress in Montreal in June this year, we received many testimonies from the United States on the fact that the space for freedom of speech in the class or lecture room is deteriorating. <coughs> And in a number of states, students have the right to be armed on campus. Is that correct? So uh, I'll just wrap up with saying that Skulls at Risk and Skulls at Risk Norway will continue to be a voice and an actor for freedom of speech and other values in academia. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to a more elaborate dialogue. Thank you.